I tell me, I mean, there's so much. I mean, it's an EP, but there's so much going on on this record. Um, I absolutely love the usage of spoken word on a couple of the tracks. Um, Thank you. You got it, man. There, there's a lot to digest on this record, thematically, musically. That's what my dad said. <laughs> Um, dude, tell me about just putting this record together, where it came from, this EP. Uh, why do an EP over a full length? So uh, the the choice to do an EP over a full length, I'll start there. Sure. Um, honestly, when it comes down to it, it's, for me at least in this situation, a financial thing. Okay. Um, you know, when you, you double the amount of tracks, you're doubling the amount of of money you're putting out and very depend on artists of course you very know true. when you have touring coming up you have to be resourceful yeah but then also it allows us if we release a full album now that's it for the year but if we do five songs then we can release other songs along the way oh. um so we've also we have two songs in the works that are originals and then a cover that we just started doing yesterday that uh, we're pretty excited about but we can't we can't spill on that oh, one yet. Okay, That's um, at least not I'll publicly, be watching. but for, I'll you, be watching. <laughs> for you to know, it's um. Nice. So, okay, fans are gonna yeah. love that, especially right now. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We <laughs> yeah. figured it was the right time. Nice. Um, but the way the album actually the EP came together, it was. Um, I just been writing songs over the past year or so. It had been a while. Um, since we had released new music, and then I had met Ronnie from Red Jumps Dude mm-hmm. while working on a TV series I do called Times the Underground. Yes. Um, we immediately connected. He performed uh, what I would consider our fan favorite single with us on the show, and then we got to talking about music. Next thing you know, we're on the phone starting this record. We meet in the studio. All of a sudden, we're recording, next, and we're on tour with them. So it was just like a very natural progression. Nice. Nice. Um, and because the songs were written at different times, it wasn't really looking back on things. It was writing them in a the moment, and I think that lended to help the EP be what it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, the the spoken word, especially um, on on Eve Black, um, and then you yeah. also you also close the record with it as well. Mm-hmm. So you kind of you kind of make the record come full circle. It it ends where it yeah. be, you know, from which it came, you know, um, but, um, yeah. you know, um, I know you do a lot of work um, with anti-bullying, suicide prevention, mm-hmm. stuff like that, and that's a very prominent, mental health is a very prominent theme throughout yeah. these songs. Um, how do you decide what you are going to touch on on some of these songs and when you're going to do it? Um, is it just kind of is it just kind of organic or I mean how does that come how does that come about? So for the most part, they're very personal stories. Um, a couple of them have to do with things that happen to other people gotcha. that I know. The main one being um, against the wall. Mm. So writing. The actual the intro of the song came from a moment in time where I was like, oh, I'm going to write a concept album about multiple personality disorders and it's going to be like the wall and things are going to be crazy. And then right. I realized I'm not good at making up stories, so I couldn't <laughs> right. do that. But the intro still intrigued me and figuring <laughs> that this encompasses multiple aspects of mental health, it seemed right to still use it. And those are all interviews with psychiatrist from one that became a very um, accepted isn't necessarily the word but publicly recognized um, disease Mm -hmm. so it starts with with actual real things about it build into the record and then it closes on the play off uh, a bible verse in Genesis and that was actually inspired by Mm. talking in the studio with Ronnie on their song Grim Goodbye which was originally a bonus track on From Don't You Fake It, he was saying that at the time he put a Bible verse in there and they made him take it out. And hmm. that got me thinking how we can make this full circle. And that started lending to the album title and all the different things. Gotcha. Speaking yeah, speaking of like like Bible verses, I, I, mm-hmm. you, obviously you worked really closely with Ronnie Red Jumpsuit mm-hmm. on the road with them. I, I did not realize 
until I saw them on the Christian charts that they yeah. are in the Christian. <laughs> I had no idea. Is that? I had no idea until I saw that either. Is that something and, that uh, came up with you guys in conversation? Yeah, yeah, it actually came up pretty heavily. Yeah. Um, and I have an interview we did that was uh, recorded, and he talks a lot about it. And for him, it was never about being a Christian rock band. That's right. why it's not really super public. Right. Um, but for him, he definitely does put a lot of that in. And if you start listening back, um. You can hear it in a lot yeah. of songs. Yeah, looking back, it totally makes sense now. But like, <laughs> I had no idea. I was like, wait, why are they in a Christian? Why is the Christian bookstore selling their yeah. music? <laughs> what? And I was like, but yeah. then, I, then I thought back. I'm like, well, the first time I heard them, I was going to Bible college. So I guess that makes sense. You know? I mean, we should have figured it was Guardian Angel from the start. <laughs> true. Very true. Yeah, I had no idea. I think that's su- super cool. Um um, yeah. The uh, the I album. Think, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think one of the reasons it worked, our um, working together works so well is because we're like them in the sense that we will put um, different things that are physically related into our music, but we don't actually, um, we don't like push it upon people or make it super known or obvious. And I think we both understood that about each other and it gotcha. helped us to really work better. Like even on stage, I don't mention any of that stuff, but before one of the songs, I'll mention how it, the influence within part of it, the specific song is, um, oh God, I'm drawing a blank. Um, it's on the record, so I only have six to choose from. <laughs> White I Rabbit? I'm drawing a blank. No, it's, <laughs> it's the first thing. Eyes on shut. That was my um, second, that was where I was going, because that's, yeah. that's one of my favorites. So that's, right. um, that song is from the perspective of when I had um, gotten in an accident at one point, and mm-hmm. but obviously I survived, but it flips it as if I had died, and God's talking to me at the end of my life. Oh, wow. So I'll mention that on stage, and that plants like a small seed to people to understand, but it's not actually speaking about it. Right, right. Gotcha. So, so, uh, so you do have so so. You, I don't want to go too too personal, yeah, but you do. You're fine. But, you, but you do have you do have faith. You are uh, b- yeah. a believer, I guess is the is the best is the the yeah, jargon right. that we would use. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I didn't I, I didn't I didn't realize that that puts a lot of it in definite per yeah. perspective and. Um, yeah, it's- it's a choice I made. I had actually worked at one point. The original um, drummer from Buck Cherry had become. Nice. Uh, he actually started going to my church. Really? And we worked on a full Christian record together. Um, but where he was, he was in the more like, let's write positive praise songs. And from uh, the mental health aspect, I was more like, no, we got to write about like the dark side of things and connect with those people. Right. Um, and I think right. like this allowed me to do that on this project. Gotcha. Yeah. And honestly, the one thing that's, that's always kind of made me sad is that the mental health isn't necessarily a subject that the church necessarily loves to, no. to talk about, which uh, I feel like that's such a huge prominent issue within people in the church that it needs to be um, because you, they all, you, yeah. you don't, it's not a comfortable subject, you know, the, you, you want to be happy, positive all the time, but it almost makes it worse. Um, yeah. And cause hard. I guess you're also to an extent trying to, um, we, we've kind of distorted the faith in a little bit where we're trying to live up to some great expectation, but in actuality we're accepted for our flaws. And I think that disconnect that happens somewhere. Yeah. has led to that, uh, but I feel like it's also being acknowledged and changing recently, which is good. Yeah, and I and I wanted to ask about the the, the cathedral on the album cover, um, mm-hmm. especially with a lot of the a lot of the your faith coming through on on mm-hmm. the lyrics and whatnot. Was that um, first off? Where is that that cathedral at? Where did you find? Was that a picture, a photo you took, or somebody gave you that you found? So or my what brother that? does. My brother does all the graphic design. Okay. Um, so he found, I, I believe it's a, a church in Europe, which makes sense with the way it looks. Yeah. But um, originally there was pews and there was all this lighting set up. So he cut all that out, changed the floor to water. And then oh. uh, if you look at the back, the what would be the stained glass is actually the logo. And 
we hid that all throughout the different single releases as well. So for the first, um, uh, the, 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 the first single where there is the, um, it's like a, a morgue, an old morgue where you change the water to. There's the logo hidden as graffiti on the wall in the background. Oh, wow. And then the second yeah. release, which is open heart, closed casket in the graveyard, the logo is on um, one of the gravestones. So that was kind of a theme that he picked up because um, he also worked on the record. He does all my drumming. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, that was actually his call. <laughs> Oh, and it, it, it's it's so cool. I didn't even honestly, I didn't even notice the water on the ground until on the floor until you mentioned that. That just makes it so much cooler. I mean, I didn't even at first. It was like a week later. I was like, "Hey, you changed the piece of water." He's like, "Yeah, that was the hardest part. How did you not notice?" <laughs> graphic designers, man. My my best friend, actually, my webmaster is a graphic designer, and and, mm-hmm. and he'll do the same thing. He's like, "How did you not notice that? That took me four days to do." I was like, "I'm sorry." Yeah. I'm like, I'm sorry. It's so cool. You know, like, yep. um, how did you, um, how did you come about with the idea for the, for the TV show on CBS with the, with, with underground? Yes. Yeah, so I was working at, um, a production house and they started to become pretty shady and I got this idea and my coworker was like, Hey, you, you shouldn't give them the idea because they're not going to make it where you want to be. And they're going to over sure. commercialize it. Yeah. Um, and people are going to have to pay, you know, thousands of dollars or whatever to get on. So I decided yeah. to call up the different representatives we worked with. And the guy at CBS was very receptive to it. And I quit that company. I started on my own and figured no one ever gave you a shot. When I was younger, everyone would always want money for everything. So let me give bands the opportunity to perform with larger bands um, without having to charge them anything, win a contest. Every band uh, I find personally and just offer okay. them to be on. That's awesome, man. And the and the title sounds it sounds of the underground, right? Yeah. I mean that goes back to the old uh, traveling festival sounds of the underground back See, in the day. I didn't even know that when I picked the title and I emailed an agent, and he's like, hey, this is pretty cool. I actually owned this tour back in the day, and I was like, huh, all right. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's awesome, man. I mean, it worked out. Um, it did. One thing that I think is super cool, we talked about it earlier, but uh, reverse of the trend, you're doing mm-hmm. work with the nonprofit, the anti-bullying suicide prevention. Dude, 400, yeah. over 400 schools, war- formerly Warped Tour, obviously not anymore, but um, yeah. you, you talked about you know, a lot of the song content coming from stories from people you've met mm-hmm. have, I mean, doing that kind of work in schools is some mm-hmm. of the most, some of the most emotional, deep, that's where some of the most yeah. trouble, because, I mean, it's going on, but those kids are still, they don't know anything, I mean, they're still figuring themselves out, too, on top of that stuff. Yeah, happening. yeah. I mean, I get how, it's got to be hard to keep it together when you're talking to some of these kids. I mean, it's got to be tough. I mean, what made you want to go that route and um, kind of reach out to that population and that group of, of kids that are having that much trouble? Cause you can't, we can't have enough of yeah. that. I mean, we need more, honestly. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was originally um, just the, uh, the idea was just finding a way to connect more with, people, our younger, our audience is always a younger crowd mm-hmm. um, within that, sure. you know, high school type range, so mm-hmm. we realize, you know, so many people aren't actually going to shows and it's hard to connect with them because of that and there's so much flooding on social media, you know, why don't we just try and go right to the source and speak with them there? Makes sense. So, we kind of tried it out in a couple schools. We, we actually played... Uh, Alice Cooper has a church and a teen center in Arizona. We did it there. They actually gave us the name, and all of a sudden, things just rocketed off. So we were on the road nine months out of the year, up to four events a day, just three, four of us setting up, breaking down, playing shows, driving. Um, It was was exhausting, but it was was good, of course. That's awesome. I mean, how how much of, of doing that influenced the uh, the lyrical t- content when it came to came time to sit down and, and write music 
definitely a strong portion. Uh, when we first started that, I, it was it's interesting because I wasn't so much struggling with that. It was more or less an awareness of what was happening. Gotcha. And then kind of part of the way through that, I started having my own difficulties and realizing that some of the things I was already going through were the same things that they were going through. So it was more of a personal connection. Gotcha. Um, and I was able to lean on that as well as lean on my own experience to speak about that stuff within the music. Gotcha. That that makes sense. Um, I, I wanted to ask, like, obviously working so closely with with Ronnie and Ren Jumpsuit and whatnot with the record, what was it like being out on the road with them, already having having that connection with him? Because you guys were touring with them up until well recently. Yeah, <laughs> we had to take a break. Yeah. we're supposed to be on tour together right now. The yeah. plan is hopefully June. Yeah. Um, no, it was good because. Because we were able to build not only uh, a relationship as friends first, but a more of a musical understanding. Right. Um, we already, the foundation was already there to sure. grow and um, kind of like the other members that we hadn't met, we at least had some sort of relation through the fact that we were writing with Ronnie. Yeah. And it also allowed us to have more fun and joke around with each other because. You know, if I just met them on the spot, I wouldn't be able to make jokes about the music and yeah. stuff like that. And, yeah. um, and it's all in good fun. Like, a, a lot of times I'll just go up to Ronnie and, and mention an album that he did not work on and be like, hey, man, this new record's good, but it's no Does This Look Infected like he <laughs> did back in the day. And he always comes back with another quiz, and he's like, yeah, that was my band, Blink-182, and it's just... <laughs> Everything's wrong. Oh, that's great. <laughs> but um, so just little things like that. Um, oh, that's so awesome. it's good that we can have that relation. And their drummer actually lives in the same town as me, so we've been working nice. on the new music together. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, with this whole dude, with this whole thing with the COVID and the pandemic hitting, with the <laughs> with the young with the, with with a younger band like like yourself, an artist like yourself, how does this how does this affect you? Because you're you were literally pulled off the road, basically. Yeah, um, it, it was a huge bummer at first, and I was definitely depressed for a couple of days. Yeah. Um, because in my mind, it was like months of build up. Like, oh, I'm finally getting back on the road. Yeah. Tour with my buddies and these great bands. You know, I don't have to go to work. And then I get <laughs> home, and they're like, Yeah, you're not doing that. And it's like, uh, all yeah. that build up, and now I'm stuck in a house, the complete opposite. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I realized the best it's allowed me to work on things like new music. Yeah. Uh, because of this, the <laughs> the TV series we were all getting ready to film, you know, I have to deal with things like rearranging that now, which it would have just been right. difficult on the road. Yeah. Oh, so, God, yeah. It, you know, it is a blessing in disguise. And then maybe the tour will just run more dates at once instead of taking as many breaks, which all those little things add up. Yep. Is nope, I'm here. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. I was in the next day then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it was crazy, man. I was um I was actually photographing the Big Ten men's basketball tournament when the when the whole thing yeah. went down. And we did night yeah. one and we're all like, Well, like they had already announced that they weren't gonna let fans in for the for the rest of the week and we're like well, maybe we'll see you tomorrow. Maybe we will and yeah. we were literally there two minutes before tip off. We're like, Nope, it's done. We're like but we're here. You know, yeah, so it's like it, it's been an adjustment for sure, especially because when you have a lot of your promotion and stuff based around, you know, the EP and the tour and the tour yeah. itself is your PR. You kind of have to, yeah, now just reroute and find something to fill that space. Yeah, yeah, it's it's stressful. It's not easy, and I'm gonna. I don't know about you, but I don't know how to be home. <laughs> like, no, I hate it. Yeah, like I, I feel bad saying my wife's not here, but I told her I was like, I love you and I love spending time with you, but I don't know how to do this. <laughs> this <is> too much. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, it's crazy, man. But dude, thank you so much for taking time yeah, to talk man. to me today, man. This has been awesome. I love the record. Eyes stone shut. Eve black against the wall is probably my favorite. Just the rhythm and the beat yeah. on that song, dude, is so good. Um, there's not a bad song on the record, man. You knocked it out of the park. And honestly, for somebody that. Definitely, man. Some of these struggles with mental health, like myself, is exactly what I needed. Such a good record, man. Thank you so much for writing this record and doing what you do. And, uh, dude, I hope that we will see each other on the road when this whole thing's over and we can all get back to Yeah, shows. absolutely. 
So that'd be uh, great. Where definitely. are you located? I'm in Indiana. I, I thought Indiana. Yeah, I'm in Indianapolis. Um, oh, nice. Have you, I remember last time we were there, we played at the Hoosier Dome. I've been there. I've been there for two yeah, it's shows. Yeah, like a little DIY venue. Oh, my God. It's Depending on the show, it can be the most fun or the most terrifying sh- venue ever. <laughs> like it's, Yeah, I got oh, good man. friends in the band the day after out that way. So. Okay, nice, nice. Yeah, is that venue's cool. I've been there a few times, and I saw, I saw 68 and Whores at that venue is what the, the show okay. there. But, oh, man, they're getting some good shows, though, so... Um, yeah, yeah, man. Um, hopefully we'll see each other and, uh, we'll connect and, uh, hopefully we can kick it, dude. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You got it, man. Thank you. I appreciate it.